Hello friends, my name is Marines, and today I've invited a bunch of friends to talk to you about their least favorite books of 2019. I challenge everybody to pick one book and to keep it short and simple. I'm Alexa Dunn. You can find me at my YouTube channel, Alexa Dunn, where I post videos about writing, traditional publishing, and books. My least favorite book of 2019 was The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. It's an adult thriller that I felt really fell apart on the landing. So I had issues with the twist, essentially, that made me go back and really think about the characterization in the novel, the characters, how they were kind of presented and built up, and essentially, the ending really stretched believability for me, as much as you should believe a big, soapy, twisty thriller. Ultimately, I felt that there lacked any significant and sufficient character foreshadowing for the big twist and even for the main character and how she kind of ended up in her situation, how she reacted to things. It just really didn't ring true for me and organic character arcs and development are really, really important for me in a thriller, particularly in every book, but in a thriller, a book can completely fall apart for me on an ending that doesn't sit with me right. I also think it's fair to say I have some feelings about the author of this book. I went in kind of hedging my bets and I actually liked it all the way up to that ending. But ultimately, I do think that the author's arrogance about their writing and their career definitely made me scrutinize the book more in terms of craft and whether or not they really pulled off the book. And ultimately, I felt they did not pull off the twist ending or the characters, so it was my least favorite book of 2019. Oh, hello. My name is Mara from the channel Books Like Woe, and you can also find me on Instagram, Goodreads, Twitter, at Books Like Woe. And uh, I'm not quite ready to say what my like ultimate favorite and least favorite for 2019 is, but I am ready to say what my favorite releases for 2019 and least favorite release for 2019 was. My least favorite 2019 release was Love at First Like by Hannah Orenston or Hannah Orenston. Uh, this was a bummer, man, because the setup of this was really fun. Um, I'm a sucker for like a fake relationship or a fake engagement kind of story, which is what this is. It's a kind of women's fiction-y, romance -y kind of book. And the setup is that this girl has a business, an online like jewelry engagement ring kind of business. She gets drunk and accidentally like fakes a relationship with someone or fakes an engagement. And then her business is going really well on social media because of that. So she wants to kind of keep up the ruse and then, you know, hijinks ensue, love happens, etc. Yeah, I just, this is a situation where you're mostly in the head of a character who I just could not deal with. I couldn't stand her. And I'm fine. Like I'm somebody who's totally down with like unlikable characters. I don't have to have all my characters be, you know, people I super relate to or people I super like, but just her, her privilege that was unacknowledged and just the crappy way that she was treating everybody. I just liked everybody in this book except for her. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much everything in this book was nice, except for the person whose head you were in. And that just made for a really unpleasant reading experience. And I ultimately ended up DNFing it, which is something that I very rarely do when I have an arc. Actually, this is the first arc I've ever DNF'd. Um, I just couldn't get through it. So that was definitely my least favorite 2019 release. Hello, everybody. My name is Chloe from the booktube channel Brunette Bibliophile. And one of my least favorite books that I read in 2019 was Hello Girls by Emily Henry and Brittany Cavallaro. This book was just a lot. I have a hard time expressing how I feel about this book because I know I didn't care for it. I gave it two stars. There was something that made me keep reading, but overall I just really didn't like it, didn't care for it. The two authors writing clashed, getting the two different characters mixed up all the time. It was just, it was a rough ride, guys. And that's why it is one of my least favorite books of 2019. Hi everyone, my name is Njeri and you can find me over at Onyx Pages. Unfortunately, my least favorite book of 2019 was Colony Ascension, an erotic space opera. This is written by Val Jean Jeffers. Um, this was my least favorite book because a lot of the sex in the book was non-consensual. The author had opportunities to explore gender diversity and sexual diversity, and she did not take up any of those opportunities. And in fact, um, 
presented a lot of heterosexism even when she had the opportunity to present um, healthy futuristic queer relationships and also the writing wasn't great. Hi I'm Linda and you can find me on YouTube, Twitter and Instagram under A Crimson Daisy. My least favorite book of the year was Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. I was extremely disappointed. I loved a lot of Winterson's other novels but Frankenstein was just, it was a transphobic mess. It's been praised everywhere by literary fiction critics and I just don't understand. It just gets everything wrong. Not only is it boring and just a mess and doesn't really have a consistent theme, I don't understand why a cis woman who doesn't even understand that trans men are men tried to write a trans narrative. Hi guys, I am Bethany. You can find me at Beautifully Bookish Bethany over on YouTube and Instagram and at Bookish underscore Bethany on Twitter. My least favorite book that I read in 2019 is kind of a controversial one, but it made me so upset that I made an entire video about it, which I normally don't do for negative reviews. This was Night Film by Marisha Pessel. This is a very popular adult thriller and I hated it for so many reasons, partly because it's super racist, like super racist, but also I just kind of hated the ending and hated the philosophy behind the ending. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I thought this was a hot mess. My least favorite book of 2019 was Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. <laughs> I'm so sorry if you've been watching my channel at all in 2020 because you've heard me talk about this book in every single video now. It feels like I'm sorry but I just I read it in December so it's like hot off the presses but also I really hated it. Ninth House was a poor excuse of a story told in too many words. I think that everything that it was trying to do was just really transparent and ham-fisted to me. It tried to do this whole like spooky atmospheric thing but what it ended up being was over descriptive and overwritten and also graphic for no reason. I didn't understand why like half of the violent gross things that were in there happened. It didn't add anything to the story and that truly is like the bottom line for me is that everything that Bardugo was doing, everything that she thought she did, was a weak attempt to me that truly added nothing but more damn words to the story. Her basic attempts at some sort of like feminist message, anti-class, wealth, and privilege didn't come through at all because I don't think she had an actual grasp of who her main character was and how her identities would fit into these systems of wealth, privilege, and power. So it just ended up being a badly written book with a stupid message at the end. Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden and my least favorite book of 2019 was A Bollywood Affair by Sonali Dev. I hate Samir with the fire of a thousand suns. He hates all women unless you are related to him or he is currently trying to get in your pants. Those are really the only ways that Samir believes women have value. He doesn't actually get any better. He continues to treat all of the other women he knows or talks to or thinks about like shit. The whole not like other girls in this book, like all of those vibes are constant because one of the things that makes Millie so special is that she eats. Like I can't believe we've managed to apply not like other girls to things like surviving off of food. But we have. Samir literally has an orgasm or almost has an orgasm every time Millie eats something in front of him. Like let this poor girl eat her lunch without you having to like go, go take a cold shower or something. It's ridiculous and we get this in so much detail um, because here's another fun thing about Samir is that he nicknames his dick and he refers to it by name in the third person in his narration. Um, arguably I know more about the personality of his penis than I do about Samir himself and that's, I didn't need that. There's this one side character who's one of Millie's friends who I think was one of the only tiny bright spots of this book and the book makes it very clear that we're not supposed to like her because her voice is too high um, and she, she talks. She's a woman who talks so we should hate her. We also have some really intense colorism that is never ever challenged because Samir is also Indian but he is white passing and the book really emphasizes that. And there's a couple places where it makes it look like it's going to be handled or addressed and it doesn't. It never engages with that at all. It, it just keeps going on and on about how attractive and white looking Samir is so that by the time you get to the end of the book you're kind of left with the feeling that the only reason he was written this way is to make him more 
palatable or like more attractive to readers. And that is so messed up on a lot of levels. Uh, this book was a train wreck. I hated every second of it and I would not recommend it. Hi, my name is Ashley. My YouTube channel name is Don't Have a Degree in Reading. You can also find me on Twitter under No Reading Degree. And I would just briefly like to talk about my least favorite book of 2020. Oh, it's not 2020, it's 2019. And that is Anne Bishop's Written in Red. This was actually part of my five star TBR predictions video. Thought that I was gonna love it. But sadly, this was one of the most bland fantasies that I've ever read in my entire life. Not only was I bored to tears because literally you follow the main character sorting mail like 75% of this book. I get what this book was trying to do. It was trying to do a power dynamic role reversal where we put the power back into the hands of the indigenous cultures of the North Americas. In the process, she managed to completely erase the indigenous cultures of North America. And honestly, I could not get past that. I could not support this book because this idea and the concept is really cool, but instead of actually putting the power back into the hands of indigenous cultures, she just um, erased their experiences and then gave us a bunch of white ass vampires and shapeshifters. 10 out of 10 would not recommend. Hi everybody, my name is Rachel and I'm from a channel called The Boston Book Biddy and today I'm talking about my least favorite book of the year. And without a doubt that it snowed in by Rachel Hawthorne. I read this during the Christmas season because I wanted something holiday themed and it provided that but nothing else. So this was supposed to be a holiday romance. It's advertised as a holiday romance. There was no romance. So it follows our main character Ashley who moves from Texas to Minnesota and she experiences snow for the first time and you know that white winter Christmas sort of thing for the first time and when she first moves to Minnesota she meets this boy and she's really into this boy. However she has a rule she does not seriously date anybody. She goes on dates but she doesn't want a boyfriend and she said that so often but the third or fourth time of her mentioning it I'm like no are you trying to convince me? or you. Now we also find out that this boy actually has a girlfriend and she's like, all right, can't have him, can't date him because he's taken. Only to find out that he's really not interested in his own girlfriend and he like pursues her. So we have this cheating storyline happening. They kiss and then she goes, we can't do this. Oh, okay, you're right, we can't do this. And that was just the majority of the book of this. Yes, no, yes, no. Do you want to date or not? And do it if you're not interested in your girlfriend, you should probably break up with your girlfriend. Every one of these characters in this book was just so one dimensional and just so lackluster, it wasn't even funny. The girlfriend of this guy just kept calling her boyfriend, oh, my boyfriend, this, oh, my boyfriend, that. She wouldn't actually mention her boyfriend by name. So, it was like, so what was the point of all that? It was never explained. Like, was there some sort of like character flaw? Like, was this supposed to be a character flaw? Like, you were just so self conscious about needing to have a boyfriend? In the end of this romance, it, after this cat and mouse of saying yes or no, um, nothing was actually ever solidified between these two people. So I feel like this book just completely wasted my time. Hello, I'm Caitlin Vanoss. Normally you can find me on Twitter at Caitlin Vanoss, um, and I'm hoping to be visible presenting again uh, on my booktube channel book chats in 2020. My least favorite book of 2019 was Can You Ever Forgive Me? Memoir of a Literary Forger by Lee Israel. I had really no interest in this book until I watched the movie which I only watched because I knew that Mariel Heller the director was also directing A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood which would be released this year and because I'd heard some reviews about it that were really intriguing. The movie takes an incredibly unlikable person and at least makes her someone I want to know about and think about. The book is just unmitigated terribleness being terrible. Lee Israel doesn't care about the people she's hurt. She doesn't care about the harm she's caused. And this is less of a big deal when she's just selling her forgeries to rich collectors and more of a big deal when she's stealing actual signed letters from universities and libraries and selling those. I only finished the book because it was so short. Would not recommend. Did not find anything interesting about it. I did actually like the movie. It's a weird movie. But 
but I did like it. Anyway, that was my least favorite book of 2019. Hi friends, my name is Sajid and I am from the channel Books on My Social Life. My least favorite book of 2019 was unfortunately What If It's Us by Adam Silvetta and Becky Albatali. Now this is not a bad book, I still enjoyed it to some extent. It had a very interesting plot, it had an interesting premise, but the execution is where it fell flat for me. I found that the book just relied on a bunch of tropes that weren't subverted or done differently in any way. I found that the references, the pop culture references that were scattered throughout the book to be very try hardish like if the authors were really trying hard to appeal to a particular audience and ultimately I was just unimpressed. And I think that the only reason why it became so popular and it had such a huge marketing push was because it's by Becky Albatali and Adam Silvetta, right? So yeah, this is one that I would still recommend because again, it's not a bad book, but it's just one that didn't really do it for me, unfortunately. But I do look forward to reading more from both of these authors in the future because I have enjoyed them in the past. Thank you to everybody who participated. I will, of course, link all of their channels down in the description along with the books that they mentioned. I will be back with favorites and the most anticipated books of 2020. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Is it too early to start asking for volunteers for December of 2020?